integrated OKR partner for our clients. We have both the OKR software along with coaching and certification so that we can help teams get spun up on the process. In fact, we've got our upcoming badge on September 13th as well for those who are interested in certifications. Um, but OKRs is really a means of getting there. Many of you would have heard, would have practiced OKRs. It's a strategy to execution framework. But what it really does is inspire teams to achieve more. Just to give you a quick sense of our clients, uh, we worked with clients span industry. So we worked with very large conglomerates. We worked with high growth startups. We worked with global organizations who've got distributed teams everywhere. OKRs is actually a framework which can be used irrespective of the industry. Um, more so that I once had a couple who came over to me and said that, hey, we're using OKRs in our marital life. So you can actually use OKRs in your personal setting as well. Um, we're absolutely excited to have among us Athira Suresh, who's the speaker for today. Athira is the chief of staff of CMR Group of Institutions. CMR Group of Institutions actually has the entire base of education right from Montessori to PhD. They started in 1991 and a, and a group of institutions which is very close to my heart because my 11-year-old also goes to one of the schools which is anchored by CMR Group. So as a parent, I would say that with full authority that it's absolutely an amazing place to be in. So Atra, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Thank oh, absolutely. Uh, so today is going to be a very, uh, very, very engaging webinar. Um, I'm just going to invite Atra as a speaker to introduce herself as well as CMR group of institutions as we kick this off. So Atra, over to you uh, to share your backstory and how you got set on OKRs. Of course. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Vidya. So I'm going to quickly share my screen. Yeah. So hi, everyone. Uh, welcome. I hope I'm audible. So I just want to start with uh, what we'll be discussing today. Just going to start with an introduction to me, my role and the experiences I've had so far, uh, what the chief of staff role looks like, um, my experiences within that role and how we um, went about you know, implementing the OKR framework within the organization, some of the learnings, some of the challenges, um, why it has worked and how we are sort of measuring that and also some of the little you know, experiments that we've done to explore uh, the implementation um, across the schools and also the university. Uh, an introduction to me at the CMR group of institutions, I started off at the university, CMR University. I was part of the strategy and innovation team. I worked and sort of built the Office of Student Affairs. And then I moved into the chief of staff role, which is across the university and also the schools, AK schools. And before this, I was working in uh, Children's Museum Education, Education Research, and also as uh, a Teach for India Fellow. When I moved into this role, which is, in, I think it's almost, almost been like a year, um, lots of changes, lots has happened. And I think it can be as defined or open based on what time of the year you are in, um, especially in the education space. I can talk a little bit about that towards the end. To start off, what this role primarily means, um, I get a lot of questions about, you know, what is it that you do every day? I think every day is quite different. It depends on the priorities of the organization at that point, the priority of the senior management, uh, what they want to execute. But I think most importantly, it's about supporting the management of teams across all of these institutions. And the second thing is the execution of the founder and provost, their vision. So how do we support and enable teams to you know, function well? And also, how do you understand the CEO and senior management's vision and support teams in sort of executing all of that? And part of that involves collaboration uh, between teams. How do we improve that? How do we implement uh, new policies? How do we think about strategy and how is the strategy implemented? What are the new programs and initiatives that we can have? What are the different white spaces between teams and how do we fill that? And how do you connect teams with each other? And it's also about building relationships internally and externally, understanding what the relationships look like within those teams. Um, what are the different priorities that we have? Um, what are the areas that we have identified as where there's a lot of progress required or there is like a progress is so, sort of stopping or halting? And also what are some of the best practices that exist in the industry? Um, sort of always being up to date on all of that uh, within the K-12 and higher education space. 
and also looking at how, you know, how are things working? Why are certain systems? And I think the first six months um, after I moved into this role, I just spent observing and learning from teams and from folks that have been in the institution for a very long time. Like, why did they, you know, implement a certain system? What was the reason back then? Do we need to change it right now? Is it in line with the vision, which is the center of why we are building all, a lot of these initiatives and programs? And also, how can they be improved? And how do you really support the team leads? Um, are their goals in line with what we're sort of moving towards? So it's a lot of working with teams, making sure there's a lot of conversation happening between teams and also executing uh, the CEO's vision for the organization. Talking about the OKR implementation, I specifically used these two images to talk about that experience. Initially, when you read about it, the start of this journey was we had a very supportive founder who wanted to look at, who's constantly looking at different ways of scaling up, different ways of helping people grow, uh, very invested in that. So uh, when this was introduced by Dr. Sista, we started sort of looking at this, you know, learning about it, reading about it, talking to people that have already implemented it in different fields. So it looked simple initially when you read, you know, objectives, key results, and then you have initiatives. You know, how hard could that be? And then you really get into it. I think the first image is mostly like the chaos that, you know, that then sort of occurs when you sort of look at all the different pieces that are there. There are lots of different teams, um, how everyone understands their role and uh, their purpose and um, what they're working towards. You know, everyone's always working and everyone's very passionate about education. They all want to build a lot of new programs and initiatives. But how do they go about measuring the impact of that? There's a lot of like output, there's a lot of input, but also how do you really think about the impact of doing certain things? What are, the, what are a lot of the tasks that we do that, what is the intention of doing it a certain way? And working through that, you know, a lot of things are tangled with each other. A lot of things are difficult to kind of uh, tear apart and look at and examine. So the implementation process was a lot of that. And the other thing is things just kept changing. Uh, sometimes um, when we when we first started implementing, everyone said, okay, uh, so this, we get this, we understand this. When we were in the process of doing this ourselves, we realized that we do need some support and guidance and coaching to support this process. Initially, when we spoke to the teams about this, they were, you know, they were on board, they understood. And then we really started examining what an objective is and what a key result looks like. Uh, what are the different tasks or initiatives that everyone's working on? And um, how do we even phrase it or talk about something? The way you even talk about something um, reveals a lot about the kind of direction that you're going in. So the next image is changing uh, ways in which things were quickly going really well. And then sometimes it would go down. Sometimes everyone would be motivated. And sometimes it would depend on how is another team performing? Because if I'm updating something and if I'm working on something and the other team is not responding to me, then how do I figure that out? And then there are all these projects, um, I think, across teams. And so if I'm doing some part of that, another team is doing another part. Um, how do you build cohesiveness? How does everyone get on the same page? How do we build those systems? And I think uh, this framework really helped bring all of that together and helped us kind of understand how we plan and look at things and what are the different data points that we need to measure impact and success. Um, so that's the process of implementation. And then going to, into some of our learnings and some of the challenges. So I think immediately what we realized at the, as we started working with the coach and as we started speaking to different teams is that, so we have about 20, 20 teams at the university. What we realized was that um, we now have an understanding of, you know, some things that are working really well and some things that aren't. And then we wanted clarity on why. So then I think uh, looking at um, when we start phrasing those, um, putting those you know, key results together, that's when we realized that, um, you know, actually this process needs to be incorporated. This process needs to be spelled out or um, maybe someone else, we need to get someone else to come in and sort of help us understand what this is. Um, just, I think the quick, the, the first thing that came out of this was that insight on what's working and what isn't. Then it was about how do we make, you know, how do we ensure that teams are working together? Some teams do, some teams don't. And then I think when we mapped it all out, especially using the platform, we're able to kind of figure out how and, why some teams that might not be communicating with each other, they were able to see that, you know, they were not communicating with each other. Where were, were those laps in communication and how do, they, how do they sort of bridge that gap? Uh, so that was another thing that came up. 
And then the new processes that need to be put into place. Now that, you know, we have like this deadline, we have a quarter, we, you know, uh, we were here at this point, where do we want to get to? And, um, you know, a lot of teams start off with very high goals. Some didn't, some were playing safe. And, you know, you, you then have very important conversations about why you are setting these extremely high goals for yourself or why you are maybe playing it safe. And then it's a great way of having those conversations and the team leads start to really think and then they speak to their teams and they have more meetings and slowly everyone, you know, and we're still in the process. Um, I'm not saying we've, you know, we've understood everything, but we're still in the process of figuring out how to have these conversations and, uh, you know, we're still trying to understand the value of all of that I mean, across teams. The next thing was, um, there was a lot of information. There was a lot of data that was being tracked. What do we do with that then? You know, uh, then we start having conversations about how to understand this. What are the important ones? We cannot focus on everything. And I think that was one of the learnings that even with our coach, we had discussed that, you know, everyone wants to do a lot, but we might not always have the time to do that. So how do we really um, focus and you know, prioritize and understand what it is that we want to do this year or for the next quarter or for the next six months? Then going uh, into one point to uh, just clarify here, and on the in the audience we have a mix of uh, chief of staff, business leaders, HR leaders who are representing different industries. And if you could also share a little more about the kind of teams who came onto OKRs, and right. and and, and uh, you know what made OKRs important when you actually uh, introduced it into CMR Group a little bit around the business context or the industry context. Definitely, definitely. So, um, for example, if I'm looking at the HR team that we have, when they came on board, um, we were thinking about, okay, so what, you know, what kind of people do we want to be a part of the organization? And how do we sort of build that? That, that goal already existed. Um, we knew what the objectives were, but how do we sort of, um, what is our process looking like? You know, so how do we start with, you um, uh, the hiring process, what does that look like? Really examining that. How long do we take to, you know, sort of onboard somebody? How do we um, uh, build a connect between that person and the organization? So really examining those existing processes. So that's one example of how we went about the HR team. So they had a huge goal, like, you know, build an incredible team of people, you know, uh, make sure that there's a match between the kind of expectations that we have and the person who's coming in. So, but how do we know that that's what's happening? And how do we understand what part of the process um, is working and what isn't? And how do we sort of go about changing that or tracking that? Um, if we're looking at the academics team, for example, um, there was a lot happening. There was, you know, we wanted to uh, change uh, the kind of, um, I think, there were multiple things that happened. So we wanted to look at the faculty and how uh, the faculty development is happening, or we were looking at how um, students are learning and um, the, the way professors are teaching and how do we give them valuable feedback? Do we have a system in place? So if we're looking at grades, if we want to improve the, the pass percentage or the, the grades that students are receiving overall in organization in, in different classrooms, then what are the different elements of that? So we're looking at faculty, the kind of training they receive. We're looking at um, uh, how do classrooms function? What is the culture there? We're looking at the kind of um, examination processes, you know, assessment styles that we're implementing right now. And then we realized, okay, this is connected, um, very tightly connected with like the examination team. So that team is also on board. And then they have those conversations about, okay, so the academics team can look at these things, but it's also tied to the examination team. How do we then kind of, work on this? How do we make sure that our students um, are building the skills that they want to build? How do we make sure that our students are, um, you know, are able to experience different forms of learning and assessments? Um, are, we, um, are we training them for, okay, so then I think the placement team will come in. Are we training them for the skills that all the, um, uh, the external folks want. So uh, when the different companies come in and we have, you know, the placement cycle, what is the feedback we have from different companies and different organizations that speak to our students? And though, and so then um, again, academics will come in and say, okay, maybe there's a gap in how we uh, train our students. There's, there's a demand for X from the placement team. We know that there's a demand for X for our computer science uh, undergraduate program or for our management program. So then should we train our students for that? 
So slowly, you know, there's a space for all of these teams to have conversations and everyone in the organization knows what's happening. Um, I think transparency was the next thing that I was going to get to. Everyone knows that, you know, these are the goals that the academics team is working towards. These are the goals that the HR team is working towards. Also, these are the demands of the academics team, which is important for the HR team to know when they talk to people that are coming in. So I think it was a great way to build that transparency for people to know what their goals are and for people to, for all the uh, team leads and teams um, to work together. So I think that's how, uh, you know, we were able to build those connections and have those conversations. And this structure allows for a lot of that um, to really make sure that teams are on the same page, um, you know, and, um, and also who's responsible for what and how do you split that responsibility, having those conversations as well. So the next thing was, you know, uh, what does impact mean for this team and for the organization? So if the team defines impact in a certain way and the organization defines impact in a different way, how do we sort of have those conversations? Um, and um, alignment, which was incredibly important. So, you know, every team has their own priority. And then there's like the, the organizational wide, like maybe there's one thing that we've chosen to sort of work towards. What are they doing to sort of connect? Um, with that broader objective or goal. And then um, focusing on the impact rather than just the output, the impact, I think that was one of the biggest shifts that was difficult to do. We really, I think uh, the expertise from the coach, from different teams, from you know, talking to different people, it really helped us kind of, it was a difficult, I think that was one of the most difficult things to do is to shift our focus to impact because everyone's doing so much, you know, everyone's doing, um, they're building different programs. They're doing a lot of research. They want to bring in uh, new ideas. Uh, when you're in a room full of like extremely passionate people that want to build different things and um, you know uh, track the track the track how uh, it's it's working out and how the students are reacting to different programs and so on. There's a lot that's happening, but at the end of the day, you're doing X, but what is the expected impact of that? And, um, you know, what is the audience for that? And how are people responding? So I think uh, that that shift, I think, when we were really pushed to think about that, that changed the way in which um, we started functioning. And, and I'm not saying that was like a quick change. It's still sort of happening. And then um, accountability, again, uh, for teams that are working together. Uh, lots, lots of projects are between teams and across teams and, uh, you know, earlier they were still working together, but now there's a structure. You know that, uh, you know, there, there was maybe like a delay in something happening because, you know, this happened and maybe we could avoid that uh, if another team steps in and helps. And we're really tracking how we're growing. We're able to see every day, uh, you know, every week when we kind of sit down and look at the, um, look at the changes, the, 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 the ways in which different teams have progressed, you know that, you know, they need some help here, they need some help there. Uh, this team is doing really, really well in this. So, you know, let's learn from them. So a lot of learning is also, I think at the last um, uh, retro reboot when all the teams got together to sort of um, discuss how they've been doing, you, you started learning from, you know, everyone's, you know, this is what I'm doing to improve um, X problem. And then another person said, this is also a problem that I'm facing. So that's a great way uh, for me to kind of, you know, this is something that I could test out. So it also creates this structure for everyone to have these conversations as well. So I think these have been the biggest sort of learnings and some of the challenges as well. I think to start off, it's, you know, it, it was a big challenge to change that um, mindset across the uh, there are some questions which have come in from uh, the audience yeah. uh, participants as well so i thought i'll take a couple of them yes yes um, please do please do joe uh, just asked uh, jennifer they, um, has asked uh, that they do want to implement okrs how much time uh, should she invest as the chief of staff mm -hmm. uh, on aligning teams to okrs so how much time did you take athra to actually really plan and get this going so if I remember, I cannot tell you hours, but maybe I can tell you about the process. Um, I think initially I spent a good couple of months just kind of understanding um, what this is and reading and trying to do it on my own, I think, um, across all of these different teams. And I think that's when we started having conversations with the, you know, OKR coach and the team. And then we started slowly building things up. But it takes about, I think, a month initially to sort of understand it yourself and to set things up. And then another couple of months to get everyone on the same page. It depends on how big the team is and how many members there are and if there are any changes happening in the organization. Because as you're building this, every team has their own priority as well. 
Uh, so, you know, um, if it's admission season, if it's um, if new people have joined the team, if you are building something new, if you're testing something out, it depends on, you know, there might be other priorities that teams have. So initially they might not be as invested. So you might ask them, you know, you might take them through the whole process. You might explain this to them, but they might take some time in understanding why this is even happening. I think initially that was one of the biggest challenges that we had was, you know, I have a lot to do already. Why are you giving me something you know, extra to do, you know, how is this connected to what I'm doing every single day? You know, helping them um, understand what that connect looks like, that takes a little bit of time. So I'm, it depends on the size of the organization again, so about one to two months. And then I think a good three to six months for everyone to get comfortable, everyone to understand what's happening, um, for, for at least 50% of the teams to kind of be on board and constantly have these check-ins and for you to also uh, build that process. And I think from my experience with Vidya, you can, you know, you've worked with a lot more teams, so you will know this better. But I think uh, a full cycle, which is like a, a year maybe to really be comfortable. And I think you'll then be able, then it might just come naturally after the first year. But I think for me, I think it's eight, six to eight months is what I would say. But it could be four to six months as well. It just depends on um, the, the industry and then the way the organization is functioning and, and how many years you've been, you know, using one particular system for, because then it takes a while to sort of unlearn, uh, orient everybody. Uh, Vidya, if you want to add. Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, I, I echo Arthur's thoughts where um, the first quarter you would be getting teams spun up on the process, helping them connect the dots between what are OKRs and how does it really impact the business. Um, but if you need to sustain OKRs, it does take quarter and quarter. You could think of it as building a muscle. So to build a muscle, it takes time. There are multiple reps. So you would need to minimum take a year commitment to ensure that you sustain OKRs to take it to the next year. Um, but the, the, the short answer to that is about two to probably three months for the teams to actually understand and get spun up. Um, in fact, Jennifer has another question, and I thought I'd bring this up now which is also going into, you spoke about tasks and outcome metrics, and you gave some really good examples of key results, which uh, the academics team supported uh, the placement team. Um, now, in the entire balance, there's always this um, medusha of OKRs and business as usual work, where the BAUs get wrapped around as OKRs, and, and then it probably gets uh, teams nowhere. So have you had that experience of BAUs with OKRs and um, is there some advice that you could give? So sorry, what with OKRs? Uh, business as usual. The business as usual. Okay, okay. Okay. And then the OKRs. Got it. And the OKRs. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I think, uh, again, it's, I think you have to make that connect between. I, so the first tendency is what I noticed initially when we introduced this was how do I use OKRs to sort of list every single thing that I'm doing within my team. You know, how do I track every single thing I'm doing? And then everyone gets kind of caught up in uh, making sure that all of the work that is being done is being documented as an OKR. So then you have like, I remember at one point, uh, there were about what, 20, 12 OKRs for one objective and everyone was tracking a lot of information and we hadn't really you know, narrowed down to what are our most important um, uh, data points and uh, you know, our priorities were all over the place because the teams had different priorities. And I think it's, it's still a conversation we are continuing to have. Uh, but one of the ways in which we did that was um, thinking about, I think uh, something that uh, another uh, person told me when I was working through it, so another individual that was also kind of implementing this was like, what are, you know, what are the 10 uh, most important data points for you that will allow you to sort of measure progress or how do you really understand or even like five data points that you really care about you really want to focus on and improve let's just start there and then we will see and then we'll progress but what does that look like for your team like organization wide or within your team are there five things that you want to kind of measure and track let's you know start small and I think that really helped us um with that. Thanks, Anita. And less is always more, as you rightly said. So five is a great. So in OKRs, we have three by five, which is not more than three objectives and Atmos five key results. So completely spot on. And that was the struggle, uh, having having those, you know, having just three and everyone was like, no, but I want one more objective. Like, I'm doing this. I really care about this. And it's about telling them, we know you care about this, but you know, let's let's just track these many things. You can still do that. You, you might be doing that as well, but let's just focus on this. 
those are the, I think, toughest conversations initially when we start. Yeah. Letting go is so hard. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Jennifer still has one more question. So I was wondering whether you would like to take it now or during the uh, course sure. of the presentation. No, no, no. I can take it now. I can slowly okay. go through this. That's okay. awesome. Yeah. And we'd encourage uh, all participants to you know hit us up on the chat window or Q&A section so that we can take your uh, questions as we go along. So there's a question about um, how conversations with leaders evolve. I think uh, you did touch upon that. Uh, as a add-on to this is where the interaction between founders and chief of staff, how, how does that interaction happen? So if you could talk to us a little bit about um, how you and Dr. Trishta actually spoke, thought about OKRs um, and uh, being relevant to your context and then introducing it. So how, how did that entire conversation go? Right. So I think um, when I had uh, moved into this role, we had already started looking at uh, the chief of staff who was working here before me. They had already started looking at OKRs for schools um, as a way to, you know, think about what we're doing, where we're at as like maybe even like a reflective practice sort of thinking about that and also to uh, track you know, the impact and understand um, uh, what's been happening. I think there were a few case studies. A lot of organizations are also kind of using this. Uh, not much in the education space, but a lot of different organizations were also using it at that point. And I think they were going through some case studies. Um, and I think it started off, uh, like the teams responded really well. They were able to have that first, the first conversation that I was talking about, you know, having that insight, they really were able to um, sit down with teams and have conversations about where they're going. Even just that, something as simple as, we are here right now, where, where do you want to go? And then how do you get there? So in schools, when we started off, we had this, we have a school development program. And there's also like, um, uh, you know, every head of school sort of sits down and thinks about how do they want to, uh, plan their year, what are their goals and objectives, uh, what, what do we want to do, what is some of the feedback that we've received from parents, for example. So we use that as the base to sort of think about, okay, so these are all the things you want to achieve as a school or as a team that's supporting the school. From here, how do you want to um, implement this and how do you track that? And then they started looking at what are the different systems we can use to track this, and that's how they started working on this at the school. And then after I joined, um, what we were looking at is, okay, so this is working well for schools. We still have some tweaks to make. Um, and then the pandemic happened. And then, the, so we, we, we really like thought about different ways of measuring that. And then um, since the teams were responding well to how we implemented this in schools, we were thinking about, okay, so in university, we have a lot of new changes happening. We have new programs coming in. We have different um, support functions sort of developing. How do we, to start off, how do we um, make sure that teams are working together with each other, which is what we observed in the schools that teams started, you know, they were already working together, but now maybe a little bit more efficiently. So how do we have those conversations? Um, how do we facilitate those conversations between different teams in the university? And also what are the processes we need to implement? That is something that came out of um, uh, the, the test run that we did with the schools. So then we moved that to the university. So it started off because we had these, you know, uh, school development plans or like we started off with having like, you know, a planning offsite. And then it was about how do we measure um, progress in this plan? You know, we, we, we start the year wanting to do so many different things, but how do we go about doing them? How do we break them down into, uh, you know, projects and how do we track the progress of all of these different things? So that's how that conversation initially started was uh, the person who was here before me. And then once I joined, we kind of moved this um, to the university. But that was a good learning experience, yeah. So, so I think what we hear you say, other is that start as a pilot. So you piloted it with schools mm -hmm. and got that process right and then scaled it to the rest of the group as well. So yeah. absolutely agree. In fact, we see OKR pilots a lot. So even in your organization, Jennifer, if you're looking at, let's say it's a large organization and you want to pilot it for let's see a certain group or as long as the group has got cross-function teams mm -hmm. and it's a good ground of uh, getting started. Great. Okay. So Azra, let's hear a little more about why it worked. I think you already got the slides here and as we yeah. get the audience also warmed up for more questions as you move the conversation forward. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. Um, so why it worked? So I think one of the best 
reason, I mean, the, I think the biggest reason that this worked was because of the kind of support that we received from the leadership teams um, and also from the founder, Dr. Sista, very, very supportive about, you know, um, and very open to experimenting and looking at how can we do this in different ways. So having someone who's constantly sort of trying to change the way we are working, constantly trying to, although, you know, it's been a while, school has been functioning for so long and so has the university, but constantly like uh, that mindset where you want to think about different ways of doing things. And um, when you create a space for everyone to kind of experiment and explore, um, that makes it a lot easier for you to try something new and like, you know, and have that patience to wait it out. I think when you first implement the OKR system and everyone sort of resists, they might be on board, but once they start um, realizing, you know, there are lots of different pieces and I don't understand what it means to like really write a good KR, it keeps changing. My priorities are shifting all the time. Um, you need someone um, on your side to kind of keep encouraging you and, also, you need someone to be patient enough to say, okay, let's, you know, let's take it slow. Let's test this out for some time. You know, it's not like one month, uh, you know, one or two or even three months. Let's, let's spend some time implementing this. Let's understand why people are resisting. So having someone who's very supportive within the organization, who is talking to everybody and also just making sure that uh, we're able to do this in a way where everyone is on the same page. And then having a mix of teams that will say that, that might take some time to understand why this is important. Teams are going to start off with, this is too much work. This is like, you know, initially when you start off, there's a lot to do. There's a lot to think about. There might be already a lot going on. So when there might be teams that are resistant to this change, but then having some teams that are invested. So I remember we had a few team members that alongside me, they were doing a lot of research and they would keep sending me articles and say, hey, this is a way. When you explain it to me like this, I didn't quite understand it, but then I found something that helped me understand this better. So having some teams that are really invested and then sort of getting their support to get others on board. And then you get, you know, you sort of like um, get more and more people to, to kind of support you and understand you. And also thinking about how you explain it. I remember the first time I did a presentation on OKRs and when it was time for everyone to ask me questions, I realized there's a lot that I need to also like consider from their perspective to, to make this more accessible and easier for them to understand. Even recently when we had a meeting, I think someone asked us, can you share some case studies with us of different uh, organizations within the education space that have done? They will show some amount of investment, but you also have to be patient and sort of take them through that journey. And once some, some of the team members are invested, really making sure that they stay motivated and you know, they're dedicated also to kind of making sure that this, this process continues. The other thing is the willingness to kind of unlearn and understand why this was important. I think when teams started realizing that by having these conversations, um, I remember having a conversation recently when we had the reboot um, Someone came up to me and said, you know, uh, initially, I didn't really understand why we did this. And it felt like a lot of work. But this really is giving me a lot of space to talk and learn from other people within the organization. I think having these structures in place, I'm really able to see what others are working on. And um, it makes me motivated to do more things and do things in different ways. And this is giving me a lot of visibility. That unlearning process and people are realizing the value in that then I think it's a, it's a lot easier to keep this up and continue practicing and really have to say Richa from your team was such a big part of our team as well uh, when we were executing this always available to sort of answer our questions you know when things aren't really working out she was always so positive and she said you know this happens when you're working within your organization you think why is everything sort of falling apart sometimes or why is this not moving forward or I'm not able to get through to teams you know I'm not able to have certain conversations and conversations are going in different ways we sit down talk about OKRs but then we talk about different things but um, I think it also helped to have someone who said you know this happens everywhere um, this happens in other organizations too. Uh, I think, you know, mostly we're on the right track and this takes time and having someone sort of say that and support us in that process really, you know, really, really helped as well. So um, that's why I have that jigsaw, like, you know, all the different pieces sort of have to come together for us to understand how, how things are working. And then um, if there are any questions, I can take that or I can just, you know, go through this. Yeah, I, I think you could keep going, Adra. We're just getting warmed up on the questions. Um, so if okay. anybody in the audience has a question, please do hit us up and um, uh, we can take that. Yeah. 
So uh, some experiments. So I think um, with the university team, you know, a lot of documents and um, presentations and conversations really, really help. Whereas with the school teams, um, it's a different space. I think, you know, K-12 and the higher education space, the approach is different. The way their, their day is structured is very different. So this is something that I was just, you know, our, the AKS schools team is also that we have about, I think, 15 to 20 teams as well. And there, um, I wanted to just play with this idea of like comics. Um, this, this started because I attended this course and uh, I was asked to create a comic to summarize all of my learnings from that course. It was a five week program. And I was just asked to summarize everything in like comic format. And I found it incredibly hard to do so. And I realized that um, at the end of creating that comic uh, that I was able to reflect a lot more and learn a lot more just by building that. So then I thought maybe I'll do something similar for the school teams where I just, you know, I have lots of conversations about why something, you know, they don't understand what objectives really mean or like what the limitations are or, you know, what do key results really mean? What's the difference between like um, a task they do and the project that's, you know, and how we define projects. There's lots of changes in that. Or um, I think there, there was a lot of confusion about what really matters, like what data point really matters or whatever question every week, I, you know, there are a bunch of questions that I get from teams. So I would pick one of those questions and create a comic around it. So it'll be very simple. It'll be like a quick, like a three frame uh, comic. Um, thanks to Canva, this is this, this very easy for me to do. So I would just create these comics and share it. Like I think every Thursday or Wednesday every week, uh, one of those days I would just share one and then just kind of get it get everyone's feedback. And then I would just keep asking them, you know, why don't you send me your questions? And I'll turn them into comics. So it's easier. It's like, you know, one piece of information, one part of OKR is explained every week. And um, I think they started reading this a lot more then because I'm not sending them a, a full document on this is what you know objectives are. This is how you create one. These are all the examples. Um, and this was just like a better way to, I'll just go through it quickly, um, a different way to kind of, you know, understand. This was another thing, you know, um, other teams are, I'm updating my timelines. Other teams are not updating their timelines at the same time that I'm not updating them. So, you know, um, why, you know, how do I figure out when I have a shared OKR? Uh, and, you know, uh, they have things happening, but at the same time, I want to meet my time. A lot of like little things that pop up. It's just a better way to sort of communicate as well, I found, um, you know. So this is about white spaces and who manages those white spaces and how you can have shared OKRs and how you can keep uh, teams accountable. So this, this, this was on that. Um, and this is a tough one. This, I got some help from uh, Richard from your team for this one because uh, initiatives and tasks are, thing this is something that took me a little bit of time to kind of wrap my head around. And also different um, organizations have a different approach to this as well. So just quickly, you know, what it really means, what milestones really mean, um, how does it contribute and, uh, you know, kind of understanding how that process works. So just some, some, some experiments that helped us and, you know, teams were aligned. I absolutely so, love them. In fact, this is one of the most creative ways we've seen um, OKRs being communicated to the rest. On a lighter note, we're, uh, we're going to hire that strawberry because strawberry <laughs> was such a great coach there. So wonderful. Thank you, Atra, for sharing your entire journey within a few slides. Uh, we're now just going to hand it over for Q&A to the audience. So we've got one more uh, question thing, which is just coming. Um, okay, so this is again from Jennifer. Thanks, Jennifer, for your questions. Um, okay, so there's a remark that, uh, you know, absolutely love what you're sharing, uh, an amazing comic, can't agree more. Uh, there is a follow-up question. Could you share a toughest moment in the OKR journey and the happiest moment? And any, and there's another one, which is an advice to other chief of staff on the call. Okay, so happiest and toughest and advice on chief of staffs? Yeah, so other chief of staff on the uh, group okay. who are going, yeah, going to introduce OKRs or who are thinking about OKRs, what would be your advice? Okay, all right. Okay. So the happiest moment, I think, you know, every day when someone is, you know, tells me that, you know, um, I didn't really understand why we were doing this in the first place. Like, it took me a while to understand it. And like, now I really, you know, I, I love using this. This really helps me, you know, have conversations with my team. And um, there are some teams that um, 
have tr started training their team members. But especially when you see people really invest in something that you introduced and you know that it's going to take some time, but some teams just really decide to pick this up and really explore this. I think it makes me incredibly happy because initially it was like, oh, don't talk to me about OKRs. Stop talking to me about this because I don't want to think about this too. You know, it's helping me. So I think that's uh, it's a pretty... I'm pretty happy when I when I hear that feedback. So that that I guess that's my happiest moment. It happens every time. Um, teams that were a little resistant in the in the beginning kind of then move to being very very happy about uh, the the use of this framework. Um, toughest was I think when they initially come up with a list of KRs and objectives, and you have to start cutting things out. You know, and when everyone's tempted to um, just put down everything that they work on, because th they really want there to be some visibility on the tasks and projects that they're working on. They might be really passionate about something and it's going really well. And to take that and tell them that, you know, because it's going, you know, really well and this is not our priority. We don't want to put this on the, you know, this is not something that we want to be tracking. Um, we have like, you know, three other priorities that we really care about and we want to look at. And just having those conversations and, you know, getting things off that list or moving things to tasks instead of like KRs, just having those conversations initially about, you know, um, we want to really cut things down. You know, that three, three, three objectives and five uh, initiatives is just not enough for some people. And, you know, they're like, but we do all of this. And just having those conversations, I think that's quite tough initially. And when things start to sort of, um, sometimes they just fall completely, you know, things fall apart. Uh, we might have had a really great conversation. And then you realize that actually uh, there was one piece of that missing and now they're not able to sort of tie everything together, you know? And then you have to keep going back and having, you know, have those conversations with them. And just not feeling defeated when that happens. It, it, it did in initially, but now, you know, you just kind of understand it the more you do this. It, it, becomes, it becomes better over time. You know, it gets a lot easier. That's awesome. In fact, uh, I thought you highlighted an important point in OKRs, which is on shared commitments, which is two teams can actually work towards a single metric. Their initiatives could be different. Mm -hmm. The entire element of getting them together and understanding that shared commitment is something which is very akin to the process. So thank you for sharing. That. Uh, we have another question. Uh, is a tool important for OKRs? What are some things that tools do? Uh, well, the, um, I think maybe we could take it from your perspective, Atira, because when you started with schools, you probably managed it on a spreadsheet. At what point of time did you transition to a tool? So university, we didn't even think about spreadsheets. I think we directly wanted to use a platform for that, I think, uh, because we, we thought about it. We definitely thought about using spreadsheets. And I think it depends on the team and the kind of projects that they're managing. So for university, I don't even want to think about the nightmare that Excel sheets might be or Google sheets might be if we use that for tracking OKRs. Um, for schools, the way that we were planning it, and um, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a smaller team, it's a much smaller team and a closer team in some ways. They have been working together uh, for a very long time as well. And we had already introduced it, so they were used to it. We did not think about the tool at that point. That's it was. We did not think about it at that point. So we, and also it was a pilot again. So we didn't know if this was work or if it was not going to work. And um, the focus was not in, in, in tracking, you know, it was about, have we really thought about the execution of a lot of the things that were, thinking, you know, that, that we plan at the beginning of the year, so the agenda, the goal, all of that was very different. When it came to the university, we knew that, you know, we have these, problems to fix. We knew that OKRs would help us fix a lot of these, you know, like conversations between teams, making sure everyone's on the same page. And it's a, it's a large institution and there are lots of teams that really need to understand each other, you know, and it really builds that understanding across teams. So the tool you, you know, um, I'm a very visual person as well, as you can see from my presentation, it really helps people to really understand, you know, when I do X, this is the change that happens. You know, having that progress bar kind of move or when you look at, um, you know, one of the features of the platform, I was like, uh, you connect, like, what are the different things you're, uh, you know, what are your priorities that connect to the organization priority or something that, you know, like shared KRs where um, you have a priority and you are doing um, 
certain tasks to get there. Another team also has a similar priority, but they're doing something else. So for example, placement and academics. You want students to succeed. You want them to do extremely well. So what is the academics team doing to make sure that um, you know, a student excels? And how is the, the placement team sort of training them to make sure that they excel in that field? Um, or they're prepared for an interview um, or they're prepared for to you know, work in a certain space. So you really see how things are connected. You see the progress, transparency. Like, I think it's very difficult to look at everyone's KRs in like an Excel sheet. And let's, again, it's like a closer team and you've been working together and you know about each other's functions. So it depends. I think it's, you'll have to kind of play with it. You know, you'll have to kind of test it out and see what works for you. But I think um, the size of the team and the purpose really matters. So. That's, my, that's been my experience, but Vidya, you've been working with a lot more people. So. Yeah, we, we see that a lot uh, as well. So uh, software is definitely comes in handy, when, especially when your teams of about 15 to 20 and beyond. And then you need cross-functional collaboration and shared commitments and tracking them all the way through. Um, so that's when uh, software becomes very useful. Um, great. I think that's a that was a great set of questions. In fact, um, um, you know, we've learned so much through this webinar because you've actually encapsulated an entire three, three and a half month journey into you know, a beautiful set of slide where um, uh, I'll probably uh, just have one more question as we move towards the wrap up. Um, oh, there's another question which has come in. So we, we still don't want to let you go out of us. So no worries, no worries. I mean, if there are any questions, I think please like can reach out to me. I think it's, it's a lot of learning um, and would definitely like to talk as well um, outside the space. That's okay. Uh, and this is actually a, 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 you know, a testimonial for you from Janetta. Atra and her approach on implementing OKR really helped all teams understanding coaching is a way of life at work. Uh, so uh, great to see this approach emulate for all teams. So this is from Janetta. So kudos. Uh, Hi, Joe. Uh, Thank you for um, joining us. <laughs> for articulating that for everyone. Um, so just as we go towards the wrap, um, is there any favorite metric of yours which has moved over the past uh, three, three and a half months uh, and you're extremely proud of sharing? I think the thing that I'm really proud of sharing is the vulnerability that teams have shown. Um, I think our retro reboot was where everything sort of came together when we had that discussion about how we've been testing this out for the last few months. What's worked for your teams and what hasn't? And you know, what are things that we can learn from each other? So I think... Um, having those conversations and how everyone was being extremely honest and so open to learning from each other and how, um, you know, this, this sort of framework facilitated the space for that conversation. And, um, you know, being, being comfortable saying, actually, you know, this didn't really work. I haven't moved much um, in this aspect, but I've done really well here. And then someone asked me, okay, why? How, did, how were you able to do that? And, um, you know, it's, it's, it's tough to do that, you know, in certain spaces, you know, everyone, it's, it, it's mostly senior leadership teams that are around and to be vulnerable in that space is quite difficult, but showing that sort of honesty and being open to learning from each other and um, just the kind of energy that, you know, teams have been bringing into having these conversations as, as each month passes, I think that's been really incredible to watch. So I'm incredibly proud of of what the organizations achieved and all the team leads have, how they've grown over its time. So really happy about that. Awesome. Thank you, Atara, for, uh, you know, just encapsulating all that for us. Uh, it's been a complete pleasure listening into you and for the interaction. Thank you to all the participants for your questions. Uh, you can connect with Atara on uh, LinkedIn and uh, follow her on Twitter. Uh, and if there are further questions, you can uh, definitely drop a note if that's okay with you, Atara. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Uh, and, you know, just as, uh, you know, a few things which really stick on my mind is um, Atra used some very, very important terms, so right from the entire element of patience to introduce and sustain OKRs, it's very, very key to the entire rollout, to keen attention to metrics, what kind of shared commitment metrics that need to be picked up from different teams. And of course, the amazing creativity in communication that you brought in so that you're able to build that memorability around OKR. So thank you so much, Atara, for being part of this webinar as a speaker. And thank you to everyone. And happy OKRing, as we always say. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.